Not to this. Her next guest is a proud Brooklyn resident and a businesswoman extraordinaire who is now owning Manhattan. She has sold more than 300 houses worth of property. Okay. And is now showing the world her savvy strength and sales techniques at the real estate firm Serhant. You know it, you love it. All on the hit Netflix series, Owning Manhattan. Please welcome Trisha Lee. Woo -woo! Hey, welcome back to the show. It's Thank been a minute. You. Thank so you so great much. To see you. I love the fit. I love the fit. This is my friend. Great Trisha. to meet you. Trisha. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Uh, Thanks for not as me. not as good as you. You look great. <laughs> the show, it's in the top ten series on Netflix in more than. 40 countries yeah. at this point? More than 40 countries. Wow, how does that feel? It's insane. It's insane. It's just unbelievable. But I, I had a feeling it was going to happen this whole time. You did? Yeah, the Please whole time elaborate. we were filming, I felt like, this is going to be huge. You just felt that special spot yeah. for something? Yeah, and I said it the whole time. Really? Yeah, yeah. Huh, we're going to have to call <laughs> my new friends Jade and Jordan and be like, did she really say that? <laughs> ask them. You could ask them. <laughs> yeah, you went from owning nail salons in Brooklyn to switching careers to becoming a real estate agent, and now you're a television star. How has life changed since the beginning? Um, well, in New York, it hasn't changed very much because no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> but when I leave New York, it's very exciting. <laughs> Honest. I yeah. believe it, you know what I mean? Like right now, they're like, well, that's Keith Sweat. What do we care? <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true New Yorker. Yeah, so outside of New York, it's kind of exciting. People recognize you and they want pictures. They want to talk to you. Um, and just a lot of people reaching out to, with just really positive reinforcement, great feedback. Are you getting pinged for more, real, more personalized real estate advice now that you're on this like crazy huge platform? Or you know, it's always been. I the always got gal. a lot of, of of those requests, but I feel like now I'm getting a lot more um, conversations yes. around like how I show up and how I represent myself and you know whatever on the show. Well, that's but, that's nice. Yeah, it's it's good feedback so far. Good. Well, let's keep it that way. <laughs> uh, well, we have you here. You're the professional. You've got the popular show. Can we ask you some real estate questions? Fire away. Yes. Uh, how does one get started in real estate investing when first of all everything in general is so expensive? Mm -hmm. But also, we know now that interest rates are just very high. Yeah. They're dropping. Okay. And they're expected to drop more this year. All right. So that's one thing. But it's truthful. You know, it is harder, I think, now more than ever. I find that the best thing for people to do is go where you can invest and where you can make money. So sometimes people have to kind of go outside of their area. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, maybe you live in New York City, but maybe you're investing, you know, in North Carolina. So look for where, the, where it makes sense to be investing. It doesn't necessarily need to be where you live. Yeah, talk to me about Gen Z and this new thing that they're doing. The millennials are purchasing investments properties before they're purchasing for a home. Absolutely, because maybe they need the rental in the city, or maybe they need this. You know, maybe they work wherever they work, but they're buying their vacation homes, their second homes, because that's what's affordable, mm -hmm. and they will eventually huh. be living there anyway. So that's right. been a big trend for the last five years, and it really makes sense if you think about it. I mean, it does. I, this, I have not seen this trend, but I mean, good for good for us. Mal yeah, I'm it's a about buying where you can afford, right? Okay. You know and when you can afford. All right. Yeah. Uh, can you give us some savvy ways to invest if you cannot afford to live um, in a more expensive city like New York? Mm, yes. I would look for areas that have the potential to just grow. And that means by population, amenities, services. Like, what do you see this neighborhood doing in the next five years? That's what you're investing in, not what it is today, but the potential mm. of the community. You know, Question, follow up on that, because that, uh, that's, that's a really good point. And I feel like I hear that a lot, but yeah. I never know. How do you, like, what, what are we, because you got to do your research. Right. So what exactly are we looking for when we're looking for that potential? Well, I would be looking for, like, development. You know, are there malls coming into the area? Are there big companies coming into yeah. the area? Are there great colleges in there? You know, that's always a good rental community. Yeah, school, that You're talking about, you know, them, making yeah. good money, then people needing housing every nine months. You know, that's a big part. So hmm. I would look at just what the area has to offer. It has to not necessarily be busy, but be growing and be growing vastly. Okay. Yeah. Do you believe that owning's always better than renting? I don't. Not always. Mm. I do think that what's great about owning is in, in most situations you freeze your costs of living. Mm. You know, like perhaps property taxes will go up a little bit, you know, maybe insurance. But wherever you're at, you're kind of going to be there in another 10 years, if you're, especially if you're in your 30-year fixed mortgage. So that is a great benefit. But there are a lot of people that live in New York City, for example, that have phenomenal rent rates mm -hmm. and they may even be, you know, stabilized. They may be fixed. And so it, you got to do the numbers for yourself to figure it out. But it is a great way to build your assets and to plan for retirement, for sure. Okay. 
Uh, this yeah. next one's a, a funny one. Uh, if you can't own a home, like if you feel like you're not there yet, you don't mm -hmm. have the funds, how do, you, um, how do you feel about friends going in on a property together and living amongst each other, a la the Golden Girls? <laughs> I love that. I, okay, I love, really? I love it. Yes. And I no think, red flags. <laughs> no, no, I love it because, well, first of all, you'll get a contract, you'll get an agreement. Everyone's lawyers okay. will represent them, you know, best. But I also think it's great because, again, you're buying at that time. Let's say you decide to do that at, you know, 38 years old with your friends. And you know what? At 62, the, the price of that house has drastically changed. You're going to be so thankful that you made that decision. Mm -hmm. I, I totally, I totally believe and talk about buying with friends, sisters, mom, dad. Buy with whoever you can buy with when you can buy because 12 years later, what are you going to think about that? investment. Oh, that's Very good. Share the cost. I've got some share calls the to make after the show today. Yeah. <laughs> Try to get something. Yeah. 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 And sometimes what friendships are, last are, longer than, than marriages. So this is, oh, that's a good point. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> You're not wrong. You are not wrong, Trisha Lee. What are three musts that a uh, seller must do before they put their house on the market? Declutter. Oh. Declutter, give people vision, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe that's like depersonalizing the space mm -hmm. so that all of your awards and all of your toys are not there. Um, but just give people space to have vision. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that the space is beautiful inside and outside. Streetscape is super important. I wouldn't go like as heavy into renovating, but just definitely make sure people can come in and see themselves living here. Like the way you do when you're at a hotel, Right. that's the effort you should be making. So clearing it out and like staging it with maybe smaller furniture so it make looks bigger. Make some cookies so it yes. smells good. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that, always that, that works. <laughs> all right, last question. Obviously the show is wildly successful. You guys are all fabulous. I know it's hard work. So perhaps people are watching this right now at home or they're watching this show or just in general they're thinking about getting into real estate. What are some what is one piece of advice, best tips you have for someone looking to enter the world of real estate? Learn about properties, mm -hmm. learn about the financial markets and how it affects buying and selling. And just figure out who you are because that's who you're gonna be putting out there. That's gonna be your personal brand. So figure out who you are and how to best put it out there for the world to see. Yeah. There it is. Mm -hmm. Sounds simple. Nice. You make it sound so simple. It's not. <laughs> it's not. I know. I'm, that's what I'm saying. They look fabulous. Right. They look fabulous in the show, but it's a lot of hard work. It, it is, is a lot, lot of hustle. hard work. Yeah. You have to know. Yeah. Okay, Trisha Lee, thank you so much for being Absolutely. here. It's Great wonderful. to see you. Yes. And listen, make sure you check her out on Owning Manhattan. It is streaming right now on Netflix. <laughs>